Hi there, my name is Derek Arnold and I'm a senior consultant with Acuvant. And today I'm going to talk to you about Shellshock, but there's been a lot of articles and blog posts and vendor bulletins about this particular vulnerability and I'm going to take it from a different angle and show you some innovative things you can do with Splunk to detect this vulnerability on your network and find out the servers that you need to patch or some of the, the threats that you're facing with this. So pretty short agenda. I'll talk a little bit about what the bug is, but there's a wealth of information outside of this that you can see to get in depth with it. I'm going to focus mostly on the detection side of it. So how can you find out if a system is vulnerable on your network and also how you can use Splunk to do some pretty detailed reporting on this threat. So what is Shellshock? It's a vulnerability in the command interpreter and it uses a buffer overflow on the environment variables. And the reason that it's particularly dangerous is it can allow a remote attacker to run arbitrary commands remotely and without authentication. So the systems that are affected by this when the, the vulnerability came out were all Linux and Unix operating systems, including Mac OS X. The various vendors have been releasing patches. Some of them had to release it multiple times because they didn't fully squash the bug when they first released it. And the other thing to realize is it's not just the operating systems themselves. It could be appliances, security appliances, and other ones that are also connected to the network. And so it's, it's pretty widespread and people are starting to patch it now, but it could be a number of weeks or months before we see this reduce significantly. So I'm going to run over to the demo and actually show you what I mean here. So what I'm going to do is pull up a window and you're going to see two screens here. You can see on the left an Ubuntu server that I'm running here. And this is, a recent release of Ubuntu, it has not been patched for, from the bug, and it's running Apache with a CGI bin on its web server. And on the right, I've got a screen that has something that an attacker might use to exploit this remotely over the internet without authentication. So I'll just illustrate this real quick with a couple of commands to show you the risk and the potential here. So we'll put a buffer command in here, and we're going to write out the password file straight away. And this is the web page that I'm going to use for this. And again, I mentioned I'm using the CGI bin here. And there you see the password file. It has the list of users and their privilege levels and the shell that they're using. So it could be very interesting for an attacker to start using. And the next one, I'm going to touch a file on the remote file system, again, without authentication. So to illustrate this here, this directory just contains VMware files at the moment. So I'll run this command and do another directory listing. And you can see there's a new file that wasn't there before that was created remotely called uhacked. Uh, so you can start to see the potential here. And I'll, I'll say anything between this right quote and this semicolon over here is pretty much fair game for you to use and run a command of your, or of your choosing there. So the last one that I'll do is downloading a file off of the internet onto the, the system. And in this case, it's going to be a harmless file. It's just going to be the blog posting that Acuvon put out for this, but it'll illustrate you know, what is really the potential here. And again, we do a directory listing and we see there's a new HTML file created on this system. So you can see uh, all kinds of potential there. So now that we know what it is, we've reviewed the threat and the impact levels, how do I find it? Well, there's a couple of different ways. Even if you don't have Splunk or you're not familiar with how to do this, 
you can, if you have shell access to a machine, you can quickly determine how to find this. And the way that you do it is by typing in the command that you see here. And what you'll see if this is successful and the system is unpatched is you'll see the message, this system is vulnerable to the Shellshock exploit. If it's not, you'll get error messages. So building upon that, what can we do? Well, I mentioned before that Apache is a potential threat vector for this. And if you run this Splunk command on your Splunk instance and you're logging Apache, you should be able to see it fairly quickly. And the part that I'll focus on here for a second is if you see this in your Apache logs, there's a very good chance that attackers are trying to exploit this and, and doing some door knocking on your web environment. And I'm also extracting some, some fields here. More about that later. So the way that this would look is you could do a Splunk search and start to see what's happening in your environment. So I'll go back to the, the live demo for this. And what you can do is create a search and a dashboard that uses this. So what this is, is the search command that I illustrated before. And the results that you're going to see are going to be quite fascinating if people are trying this on you. You'll see this yellow highlighted portion is the beginning of the, the exploit. So you'll also see the command that they're attempting to run and where they're coming from. So with these field extractions that I built here, you can see the exploit code. And some of these are the commands that I ran in the demo before. You can see the host that it's being attempted against. And you can see the IP addresses of the sources that are trying to do this. So a way to automate this and really see what your environment is looking like is you can use your Splunk forwarders. And the way to do this is you create this file on each of your Unix systems. If you have a deployment server, you can use that. If you have Ansible or Puppet or Chef to deploy files, you can, you can do it that way as well if you like. But basically, the thing to know about this command is on a scheduled basis on your Linux forwarder, it's going to run this command and through some bash commands, it's going to determine if you're vulnerable or not and then report that back into Splunk. And then the second file is just going to create a new script that runs on a scheduled basis to run the script from the previous slide. So with these two commands deployed and put in the appropriate directories, you can automatically report on your environment how you see fit and uh, credit the, the Splunk blog for how to do this. So using a, a Splunk search, you can start to see the logs for this. So let's go back to the demo. And I've created some reports that help uh, illustrate this. So if you open this in search, you can see the systems that are vulnerable in this column here, what they're running, the platform, and the host name. That's one report that you can glean out of this. The other one is vulnerable host. If you want to look at the raw logs that are coming through, this would be how you do it. And another one is you can actually see a dashboard that I've created for this. So what I've done is I put all these searches together onto a dashboard that you could publish or email to your Unix administrators or your security folks. And you can see the Apache activity here and it goes back uh, through the day. You can see some of the harmless ones as well as the potentially harmful ones. You can see the attack sources using this table here. And remember, I pointed to the field extraction where we have exploit code used. And I did a geolocation on these to see where the attacks are coming from on this. You can see it's uh, various locations. Uh, your vulnerable host data. So this is the raw logs that your forwarders that you set up are sending their logs in. And the key field of interest here is going to be the status field. This is going to be the vulnerable hosts that you're going to want to patch based on their reporting posture. And then I did a couple of quick visualizations on this and I can tell that 
three quarters of my environment is vulnerable and one quarter of it is not. So you can kind of see at a management level, uh, executive level, how, we, how we're doing on our patching. And then the last one that I'll show is the attack sources. So if there's certain countries that you don't do business in that you'd want to block, uh, you can start to mine data out of here. And the last thing I'll mention is if you're seeing certain commands like this wget that isn't legitimate business activity, you can also consider blocking that on your WAF or blocking it with your IDS IPS system. So, conclusion. Shellshock is a very serious vulnerability and a lot of systems are starting to get patched now, but you can get some greater visibility using Splunk through these methods that I outlined in this talk. It's a very easy exploit vector. You saw how easy it was for me to do is when you know the, the code, you could copy it and paste it into a terminal window and have success on a vulnerable system. So using Splunk, you can help detect, report, and alert on your NIC systems. And the last slide I'll leave you with is some references if you want to do some further reading. Acuvon is posting a series of entries on that, and Splunk is also very much on top of this. So with that said, I wish you luck, and let us know how we can help you with this.